Hey, head coach uh, Tom Preston here, and I want to chat with you today about um, an Ogbandino training, what he calls scroll number one, which is that will form good habits and become their slave. Uh, now, if you're watching this on YouTube, you know, and you enjoy this video, we would love to have you subscribe. So just, you know, touch the bell or subscribe below one way or the other. You'll get notified of these videos every time that they come out. <clears throat> now, when I first heard this scroll from Og, I was a little bit concerned because I thought the word slaves, you know, it, it, it sounds like some sort of a bondage thing where you belong to somebody like in the old days or a sex slave or whatever, right? But actually there's a second part to Oxford's dictionary definition of a slave. And they say it this way, a person who is so strongly influenced by something, they cannot live their life without it. So forming good habits allows you to become a slave to them, which means you cannot live your life without them. And we have a saying in uh, at Full Circle that says, how you do anything is how you do everything. So watch the implications here, okay? Um, my father, one of my greatest teachers in life, he had a saying, he said, son, the first decision is the most important one, but he says, if you're gonna do something, it's worth doing well. So the first decision is decide whether something is worth doing. But if it's worth doing, then do it well. And if it's worth doing well, then make a habit out of it, which allows you to then repeat it successfully over and over and over again, okay? I was in a training uh, that, uh, that I was giving as part of a team down in Dallas, Texas uh, several years ago. And we were talking about this concept of habits and forming good habits and you know, uh, if I took the extension of Ogmandino's piece, you know, and, and becoming a slave to them. Um, and what this woman stood up and uh, she said something I thought was so incredibly wise. She goes, you know, for me, um, at least 50% of the challenge of doing something is making the decision to do something. And I thought that was incredibly wise. And there's a lot of social psychology that would back up her saying. So she said, there were things that I, that I took the decision-making process right out of play and I just decided to do them every day for the rest of my life. Man, that was like Eureka Bingo moment for me because it was like, wow, something that is worth doing, worth doing well, worth making a habit out of, you just decide to do it for the rest of your life and you never have to think about it again. I made one of those commitments to myself many years ago with something I call my morning rituals. I've been a relatively fit health fitness guy uh, all of my life, exercised regularly my entire life. But I decided uh, in this uh, literally New Year's Day 2009 that I was going to exercise every day of my life. I was going to just take the decision out of play and it was just who I was, so it was what I did. And let me tell you the implications of that. I haven't missed a day of my morning rituals, which I'll describe them in a second, but I haven't missed a day since January 1st, 2009. Not a day. Now, I'll tell you a crazy time and a story in a minute when I was in Seattle speaking one time that I almost missed. But again, I have become a slave. I cannot live my life without these because they support so many parts of my values. They support who I am as a human being, who I am as a father, who I am as a husband, who I am as a business leader, and so on. Okay. Now, my morning rituals involves a morning meditation time, which is good for the mind and the soul, and I would argue the body. Uh, it also involves some Taoist Tai Chi and yoga. Um, it takes about 25 to 35 minutes, depending upon how deep I go. And again, good for the mind, the body, and the spirit. And then from there, I go into some form of exercise, which is either some form of resistance training uh, and or some form of cardio uh, on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays, I do my uh, cardio. Um, and so again, on Sundays, I just do my yoga and Tai Chi, but it's some form of activity, some form of exercise, some form of uh, something I cannot live my life without that I do every day of my life. And I absolutely love the implications, you know, to that. Okay. So again, if you make a decision to do something that is good for you, then just make the decision to do it every day for the rest of your life. Uh, and watch what happens, watch the magic, because you will no longer have to make the decision, which is at least half of the challenge, and it's just something you do. I was tested one time, I was speaking in Seattle, and because of the time zone for me in Eastern to Pacific Standard Time, uh, I got up at literally um, three something in the morning because I had to be at the airport for four something, I had to be there two hours before my 6 a.m. flight. I did my city in North Bay to Toronto, Toronto, Vancouver, Vancouver, Seattle. Uh, there was delays and stuff. I got there literally 20 minutes before the program, which was 8 p.m.
Pacific time, which was 11 p.m. my time. So I've been up since three in the morning, okay? Three something in the morning. I've been up about 20 hours when I went on stage, okay? And I spoke for three hours. So I got off stage at 11 p.m., which was 2 a.m. my time. Well, now I've been up for 23 hours. Well, then some of the guys wanted to take me for a drink and celebrate. And so we went to the bar and had a couple of drinks. I got back to the hotel room at around 2 a.m. their time, which was 5 a.m. my time. Now I've been up more than 24 hours. I was friggin' tired. <laughs> and so what do you do? Well, I grabbed, I had to get up, uh, be at the airport, the SeaTac airport for 4 a.m., because I had a 6 a.m. flight, again, two hours before, to pass TSA tests and whatever. So that meant that I could have slept in until like right to like, you know, quarter to four, got my butt out of bed, not even showered, and then, you know, jumped in a cab and got to the airport. No, because I am a slave to my habit of my morning rituals. So I set my alarm for three. I got a solid hour sleep after being up for more than 24 hours. I did my rituals. I had my shower. I got in the cab and I went and I had a day. So again, it was a test, you guys, that I had, but uh, some people would say that that's insanity. But you know what, that's just perspective. For me, something worth doing is worth doing well and worth making into a habit. And again, as the definition says, it's something that I can't live my life without. Now, watch the ripple effect into other parts of your life. I asked several people in our community, the Full Circle community, they said, well, somebody that does you know, what I do every day, give me some uh, adjectives that describe them. And these are the kinds of things that I heard. People that would do that every day of their life, there's someone that's reliable. There's someone that's dependable. There's someone that's committed. There's someone that's consistent. Let me tell you something. How do you th think that makes my wife feel to know that those are character traits that I have built inside of me and I've exercised every day of my life? Dependable, reliable, committed, consistent. How do you think that makes my daughters feel? How does it make my team members feel? How does it make my clients feel? Because how you do anything is how you do everything. And so I have built in and expanded those muscles of consistency, reliability, dependability, commitment, and stuff. And those show up in other parts of my life. It's made me a better father, a better husband, a better friend, a better athlete, and a better business person as a result. So again, I offer the wisdom from Ogmandino on this. His first scroll, right, is I will form good habits and become a slave to them. Please take it to heart, build it in your life, and watch your life accelerate.